service here in Peterhead Congregational Church. For those who are joining at home, we are glad to know that you are able to be with us. And this morning, uh, at the end of our service, we will celebrate the sacrament of the, the Lord's Supper. So you'll be able to use whatever you have in your own homes, a, a bit of bread and, and, and some juice or wine or water, whatever it is, um, and, and we can do that towards the end of the service. And, and let's hope that as indeed and trust that as we do that, we'll be drawn nearer and closer to the living God. The psalmist writes, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Let's worship God together and sing to his praise and his glory in Mission Praise 656. The Lord is King, lift up thy voice. Lord God, 
We recognize your presence in our lives every moment of every day, leading us and guiding us. But as we come this morning to bring our worship to you, so we would ask your forgiveness upon our lives. <coughs> we would confess that we have sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed. In every way, Father, we so readily turn away from you and turn to our own devices, leaning upon our own will and our own selves. And yet, in ourselves, we are without foundation. So help us, Lord God, to return back to you. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us for the times when we wander and stray. Forgive us. And in your grace and mercy, take hold of each and every one of us. And bring us this day back onto your path, back into your will, that we might live and work and serve your purposes. Lord God, we would remember before you this morning all those who continue to work to enable us to live. We thank you once again that this week there has been a, a reduction in the, the, the number of infections with COVID-19 and we've seen the number of people in hospitals and in intensive care units dropping and we've seen the numbers of people in, in, in Scotland uh, be, who have died becoming less and less but we would remember all those still working in the health service still working on a front line for our sake and for our benefit so we pray for all those who continue to work to make provision for each one of us giving thanks for all those in the NHS, for all our emergency services, for those folk that we mentioned before in shops and, and in other places, those bringing food to our town, those taking food to other places. We continue to remember our funeral director here and funeral directors all over the land who, who are also on that same front line. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be able to worship you each week through the, the technology that you provided. And so we pray that you would continue to enable us to do that. We pray, Father, that for those families who, who have lost loved ones, we, we remember them before you in their grief and in their sorrow times of, of trial and difficulty, yet you are never far off. You are near and you hear the call of all who call upon your name. So we pray for your peace and for your love and for your grace in the hearts of all where they have lost those so dear and precious to them. We thank you for the life and the witness of the gospel here in this church, in this town, throughout the whole of this land. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ serving here in our town and we pray that your blessing will rest with them. We, we thank you Lord for all the organisations of the church moving ahead and planning and yet having to wait wait on you so help us to be patient and help us to to obey the rules that are laid down for us for the benefit of all as restrictions are eased help us not to 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 wander away from the things that we're being asked to do but instead enable us to follow your will and your purpose Gracious God, we ask that you would remain with us now and that you would be at the heart and the centre of all we would do and say this day. Be in our praying, 
in our reading, in our preaching, be with us as we come to share at your holy table. May we all this day meet with you in accordance with your will. For we would ask all of this in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray together and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Now we would turn to God's word. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, from Philippians at chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 1, from verse 1 to, to verse 18, and that's on page 1179 of the, the Church Bibles. Philippians chapter 2, and reading from verse 1. Hear the Word of God. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his word. And to his name be all glory and praise. <clears throat> the hymn before the sermon is number 65 in Mission Praise. 65, break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me.
God our Father, as we now turn our thoughts to your word. So we pray that you would open your word up to us, that you would speak to us in and through and by that word, that we might know your will and your purpose for each one of us. Help us this day to open up our, our hearts and minds and give us a desire and a willingness to hear you speak. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A scripture passage this morning taken um, from Paul's letter to the, the church in Philippi. And the, the message that runs through that um, whole letter to Philippi is about consecrating ourselves to God, about giving ourselves over to God, handing our lives over so that in all that we do, we might live for Jesus Christ. We're reminded that we should also have a love for the church of Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean we have to fall in love with the bricks and the mortar that are round about us, but about the people of God, wherever they may be. So for us this morning as we come, particularly as we come also <clears throat> to the Lord's table, then we need to make sure that our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is right. And that when we come to meet with him at this table, we do so trusting and believing in him. Now as I say, we come to this table, of course, the table doesn't matter where it is. This morning, as we said earlier, we're in our homes scattered all over this town, <clears throat> all over the land, perhaps even in other parts of the world. And it doesn't matter where we are, because we know from the scripture that no matter where we may be, that Christ is with us if we have our hope and our trust in him. And it doesn't matter if we've got a silver plate or a, or a glass or a mug or, or, or a, a bottle of water or whatever it is. The night that Jesus sat down to the, the, in the upper room with his disciples, he didn't have a highly polished mahogany table and carvers and fine chairs. What was there was used. And after all, when we come to him, we come to a rough, hewn cross of wood where he died for us. So we can come to him anywhere and in any and every circumstance by faith. Now this morning, the passage is a challenge to us in a way because it says, there's a wee heading at the top of the beginning of chapter 2 in the NIV and although these we headings are not part of the text. There's an indication here of what this uh, appears to be about, about imitating Christ's humility. Now we all know from our readings of the gospel, no matter which part, which gospel we read, there is one thing that's abundantly clear, that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who came to this earth to save us, to bring us back into the kingdom of God, he thought lowly of himself. He didn't think he was high and puffed up. Instead, he was the one we've come to speak about as the servant king. The one who came to wash the feet of his disciples, the one who comes and touches our, our brokenness, who touches our lives. He's the one who came and didn't shy away from those with all manner of infectious diseases. Instead, what did he do? He touched them. He touched their lives and in the touching, he made them whole. Now the task for the Church of Jesus Christ today 
is to touch the lives of people who feel that they're far away. You know, there are lots of people throughout our own town here and across this world who think that they wouldn't be worthy to come through the doors of a church. And of course, the answer to that is, who is worthy? For there's none of us worthy in ourselves. It is faith in Christ that calls us and makes us worthy and brings us through the door of any church, seeking and waiting. And either everyone's welcome or no one's welcome. On the outside, at the bottom of the notice board, it says, all are welcome here. Either that's true, or else we want to set up some kind of vetting process to say, well, we don't like you because you do this, or we don't like you because you do that. It is not for us to decide who may come through and who may not come through the door. The door is open because it is not our church. It is the church of Jesus Christ. And if he is king and head, then our answer has to be to welcome all and any who choose to come and worship God. Now the thing that changes lives, as we've spoken many times, is the word of God itself. And of course in this opening part of this um, chapter 2 in Philippians, Paul lays a challenge before us because he says, if you have any encouragement from being united in Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, and he's not doubting the faith of the people in the church in Philippi. He's challenging their faith. He knows who it is that he's speaking to. And he's reminding them that they have this gift and, and, and these gifts from God. But they have to be used not for their own glory, but for the glory of Jesus Christ. And so that's why this challenges here. He's, he's, he's challenging all of us to realise that as Christians we should, you know, we, we have encouragement from the Saviour and we should have comfort from his love and fellowship from his spirit and tenderness and compassion. Do we show those all the time? I'm sure we don't. I'm sure there's lots of times when we shy away from this person or that person. I'm sure there are times when the things that we seek to do, we do selectively. Instead of that, we are not to think of ourselves. But instead, we are to put our whole attention onto others. Now, of course, at this time, in the, the life of our, our country, surely we as, as individuals can see what others have done for the sake of all of us. All those serving in, in, in intensive care units and, and indeed in any part of a hospital anywhere in these days or in doctor's surgeries or, or in nursing homes or even home carers. All that they're doing when they come in. Every day, they're laying their own lives at the feet of those in those houses. Every day, they are thinking more of the people that they're looking after than they're thinking of themselves. Some are staying away from their own children and homes so that they can't take anything back into the homes again. And it's, it's great to hear of, as we said in the prayer, giving thanks to God for the, the, the figures coming down, but it's still here. It's 
still in our land. It's still able to, to rise again if we are foolish. Therefore, we are called to be wise and to be wise in Christ. And we must remember that the scripture reminds us that we are to be, uh, we are to follow the, the, the regulations that are laid down by those who are set in authority over us there to help us. And as Christians, we must show an example. If it says that in the word of God, we can't toss it to the side and think that that's acceptable. Instead, we have to be challenged by that word. Now this word's reminding us that, as we said, that we are to be humble, not to be proud or haughty, not to be, a, 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 you know, think that we're, we're above other folk. There have been many Sunday nights, you know, at our evening service, standing at the, at the front door of the church there, and there have been quite a number of Sunday nights when some younger person would come across the road from the pub across the road asking if they could come in, sometimes coming in and sitting through the service, sometimes afraid to come in, sometimes not sure whether they would be welcomed. It is not an uncommon thing to hear. Is it okay if I come in? Can anyone come in to a church? There's a statement for us. Can anyone come into a church? Now, the truth is, if we had enough big crooks, or I don't mean folk who are crooks, I mean big shepherds crooks, we'd be drawing folk in through the door quicker than you could say, uh, boo, we'd have them in and sitting and filled in. But, but maybe it's just that we don't perhaps make them feel welcome. Maybe we forget that when we go out of this place, we are to take the name of Jesus Christ with us, wherever it is that we're going, and, and share that name. Not standing in judgment over folk, but standing right next to them, where they are, encouraging and helping them. He says in verse 2, if you have... Um, or sorry, if, if any comfort from, from his love, any fellowship from the Spirit, any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded. Now that doesn't mean that we're all going to be the same, because that's impossible for us all to be the same. It doesn't mean that we're all to be clones of this person or that person. But we are all to have our hope set on the same one, Jesus Christ. Not in the things of the world, not in the things that we see round about us, but upon Jesus. We are to fix our eyes upon Jesus. We're to lift his name, as we read at the end of this passage, high above every other name. How important it is for us today to remember that. That we are to make, Paul said, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in purpose. What is our love? Jesus Christ is our love. What is the spirit? The spirit of God this earth, that, that draws near to, to change our lives and, and make us his own. And what is the purpose? The purpose of God. Everything's focused back upon God. So what is it? Imitating the Christ's humanity. It's not about, about doing something false. You know, they get these guys who can come on and, and, and the, the, the telly or whatever and, and do impressions and they sound like all these other people. That's not what we're being asked to do. We're not being asked to sound like Jesus. We're not being asked to pretend that we're Jesus. We're being asked to show our faith in Jesus Christ. To show the trust that we have in him so that others will be drawn and called into his will and his purpose. 
Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than ourselves, than yourselves. Consider others better than yourselves. Many years ago, during the time I was training for the ministry, I served in a church in a town in the west of Scotland. And this church was so divided because one half were wealthy and rich and the other half was, was very, very poor. And that was so obvious because the people did not mix. They did not mix one with the other, but they kept themselves apart. Where's Christ in the middle of that? Jesus didn't say to us, um, separate yourselves into how much money you've got in your bank book and make these folk your friends. That's not at all what the gospel says. Instead, it is our faith that's to bring us together. It's not about whatever we do. Look at that lesson. Look at that phenomenal lesson that's given to us in the scriptures where Jesus is sitting at the, the temple and all the people are putting their offerings in and making a show of, of dumping all this wealth into the bowls that were there and the woman who comes and gives a fraction of a penny. Just as we know the, 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 the widow's might and who gave more? And Jesus says to his disciples, the woman gave more because it was all she had in the world. She had nothing left. She gave everything to God. Now, when we are willing to give everything of ourselves to God, God's not wanting your wallet. He's wanting your heart. He's wanting you and me to love and trust and follow him. He's wanting us to be like Jesus Christ. He's wanting us to walk humbly and to be concerned for every person that we see. Think of the times that we read in the Bible when you know someone cries out to Jesus or someone reaches out to Jesus. And we read on several occasions of folk telling folk to be quiet or, 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 or to go away or whatever it might be. But that's not what the Saviour says. He ends up stopping and going to see where they are. He ends up reaching out and healing the brokenness. He ends up blessing the lives of those who probably think that they've no right to be blessed. Now, for each and every one of us who knows Jesus Christ in our hearts and in our lives, we have been given an abundance and a hope and a promise that will take us into eternity. But that needs to be shared. It's got to be told. It can't be kept to ourselves. It's to be given out to others. You know, he said, he was reminded at the end, of just two lines in verse 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. And then from verse 6 down to the end of verse 11, there's this, this it's more like a, a, a poem or a psalm, and it's become known as the kenosis. It's, because, it's been given a name because it describes the person of Jesus Christ. And at the end of that, there's something that we are called to do. It's, and it is this. It's a call to our hearts and to our lives. In verse 9, it reminds us about Jesus. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. Do you see that? God exalted Jesus Christ to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus 
every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now that couple of verses, those two verses are there and they should be the, the challenge for us today because they sum up what the will of God is there. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now how can knees bow if the name of Jesus is not spoken? How can knees bow if the name of Jesus is not heard? Can, should we be satisfied sitting in the warmth and the comfort of churches all over this land and saying, we have a bonny place to meet and it's warm and it's cosy and the congregation's holding its own. Is that how we're supposed to be? That's not how we're supposed to be. What we're supposed to be doing is taking the name of Jesus Christ to all so that their lives might be changed. I've, I've said here, I suppose, in the past several times, maybe we should really consider putting a couple of big speakers out in the wall outside so that you can't go up or down this road when a service is on without hearing the name of Jesus. People think that he's far away. People think that they're far away from him. And instead is as near as could possibly be, prompting, calling, changing the lives of men and women and children. And in a couple of minutes, we'll come to the table. And at that table, we'll take bread and we'll take wine. It is not that the bread changes its function, the bread remains bread. It is not that the wine becomes anything else other than the wine. It is wine. But it is by faith, through the grace of God, that we may meet with him here. That you may meet with him today as you sit on your sofa or, or on your big chair or wherever you're sitting in your house. It is that when we come to him with hearts that are filled with him, that we will meet with him and have communion with him. Not because we have any right, but because he bids us come and follow me. The scripture says that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The work of the gospel is not complete for us. There's plenty work to do to bring home a harvest for the Saviour. Shall we pray together? God our Father, you challenge us in your word. You challenge us because we can become so comfortable, so content, and yet there's work to do. There are souls to be touched. There are lives to be saved. So, Lord God, we pray this day that you will give us all the strength and the courage that we need to serve you and to proclaim the good news of the gospel. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek 
and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Our communion hymn is from the Sankey hymn book number 40, Jesus my Saviour to Bethlehem King. passed on to you, 
that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the lord and a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the lord eats and drinks judgment on himself amen shall we pray together <coughs> God our Father, as we come now to this table, we thank you for this opportunity to gather before you this day, to be fed by you with this great feast, by a bread and with wine that can completely satisfy Jesus Christ. So as we come today, <coughs> as we come humbly and quietly draw near to us lord reminding us of the faith and the hope that we have in jesus christ your son our lord reminding us of the call and the claim upon our lives we ask that you would bless this bread and this cup that as we partake by faith through grace, we might indeed meet with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me in the same manner also after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood drink from it all of you in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore take this and eat it, for this means the body of Christ, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of him. This cup, which stands for the new relationship in the blood of Christ. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of him. of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all shall we pray together God our Father we thank you that this day we have been called by you to the table and at this table 
you have satisfied our every need. Send us now into this world to serve you. Send us equipped and ready to be your people today, to service the need of the gospel and to share the name of Jesus Christ wherever we go. We thank you that you have first loved us. We thank you that you touch our lives. We thank you that you have made us your very own. In Jesus' name. Amen. We would conclude our service by singing together the, the last hymn, number 91, in our Sankey hymn book, Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe.
rest upon you and upon your homes, upon all whom you love in this place and elsewhere, this day and for evermore. 